email I read it. He said, I'll be flying from Australia in December to Philadelphia to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Why is so many people coming from the four corners of the earth? Can't you not see Houston? Something is going on in the earth. It's the hand of God that's moving in every state, city, town, village, country. This is the message for the last days. And that message is get your house in order. We're living in a time now where the climate of hate towards God is forever growing. Politicians who pretend to be Christians but justify every kind of filth under the sun. Preachers who pretend to be messengers of God but yet too scared to tell you what God wants you to do to keep you out of hell. Parents today don't want to be parents to their children. Fathers want to be their son's big brother. Mothers want to be their daughter's big sister. Our generation of parents are getting younger and younger. Children having children. The uh, social media have every form of madness out here. And the government is catering to wickedness. And if you stand up for God, you might get thrown in jail. You know, that's the way the government is aiming for now. Like they have this homosexual thing now and they're trying to make businesses be compliant with not just a men's room and a ladies room, but a, but a transgender bathroom. Amen. That's for men uh, who say they're women and that's for women who say they're men. Well, any property owned, bought, built by the truth of God, there will only be two bathrooms. <laughs> one for men, one for women. You let me catch a man trying to wander in one of our ladies' rooms. Glory to God, we'll scoop you up and give you revelation. <laughs> the world is in a pitiful predicament. Oh, yes. Many people ask me, Pastor Jennings, aren't you afraid something's going to happen to you? No. Mm -mm. God Almighty is with us. Oh, yes. If God wasn't with me, and you think I would stand so bold and speak so loud against the governments of the world and against the religious deception, all of us were deceived by some kind of religion That's right. sometime in our life. Right. And we don't realize how blind, deaf, and dumb we are or were until God began to deal with you. When God deal with you and open your understanding, you are amazed at your own ignorance. You even have to say, you mean to tell me I was that dumb? You mean to tell me I believe this? I used to believe that? Well, a lot of our parents done the best they could. They taught us what they knew. But God's knowledge is broader than our father and mothers. Oh, yeah. The knowledge of God is designed to lead us to him. That's why I tell all television viewers, ignore my voice. People all over YouTube. One man said, it ain't no human being got a voice like that. He done something to it. <laughs> Another man made a comment. His voice must be, how he put it? Computerized, animated, something. No, it's, it's me. It's mine. That's right. God made my mouth big like this and forcible. That's my right. mouth is too big for my body. <laughs> Amen. But God Almighty... Hallelujah. Brings out a loud sound. Hallelujah. Different from what people are used to hearing. Amen. There's no sugar. Can't get us mixed up with nobody. We point you to God's everlasting word. We're like that dog in your next door neighbor's yard. That keep you up when you want to sleep. You throw shoes out the window. You yell out the window. And the dog keep you up. Well, God made me a loud barking preacher. And you throw your lies and whatever because you want me to stop making this sweet Holy Ghost noise. Because it's interrupting your second marriage. It's interrupting your shacking up. 
It's interrupting your homosexual lifestyle. It's interrupting the wealthy bourgeoisie preachers who've been robbing the people out of millions for years. That's right. It's interrupting the devil's playground. And God knows we're going to continue to do this. That's right. If God be our helper. That's right. All right, let's dive into the Bible. Let's dive, dive, dive. 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 Amen. The Bible is the book of pain. Amen. And I want to say to my extended family here in Houston, just give me some time, God willing, uh, once we find a place where we are temporary rent and we're going to get right on it. My secretary will get right on it. It'll be announced on our social media website, on our church website. So pay attention and be looking, be looking every day. And everybody will be notified the date and the time and we'll come back. And let your family know, let your friends know, let the false prophet know that you left. That's right. Oh, amen. Let them know. In fact, tell them to come with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, the second service is going on today in Detroit uh, after our temporary location there. And I want to say to Chicago, I haven't forgot about you. We're still trying to find a place to get all of you together also. I'm so glad to see how God is sending just a tidal wave. Mm -hmm. Through the country and preachers. Now when I travel in different places, preachers now <clears throat> are sending memos out to other preachers. Encouraging them to have church on Saturday when I come to the area. To try to keep their members from coming to the services. Lord. Isn't that something? Lord. You know that that goes to show you even the preachers are desperate because when they see the people start leaving, their, their, their food is leaving. Uh, and the llama beans is walking out and they pork chops and they chicken and they fish and they collard greens and turnips. Now he got to get a real job and go to work and he don't want to work. He want to live off the people. But my God, this word going to put you right or put you in the lake of fire because you don't want to be right. That's right. All right. Now, let, let, let me straighten something out from last night. I, I mentioned in reference to the Apostle Paul, you know, a lot of folks say, well, if there are apostles now, then everybody would be healed. Like I said last night, that's not the truth. And I, well, I mentioned about the scripture where Apostle Paul, he was in a certain location and he mentioned how he left one brother sick. And script, Williams read a scripture in the book of Philippians, but it was the wrong scripture. Right. I want 2 Timothy chapter, chapter four. 4 and verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and that verse 20. Because a lot of preachers say that the apostles everywhere they went, everybody got healed. That is not the truth. Right. Because the apostles weren't healers. God is the healer. That's right. As I said, moreover, a preacher can pray over you, but if God don't heal you, well, there's nothing to preacher can do mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to blow on you <laughs> amen and I'm not going to grab you and push you on the floor no amen if God don't knock you down there then you may remain standing that's but right. if God do knock you down there then I'm going to let God get you up because I'm not picking you up that's right <laughs> all right <laughs> all right come on William second Timothy chapter 4 and at verse 20 let me straighten that out quickly now all right Erastus abode at Corinth Erastus he stayed at Corinth. But Trophimus. But Trophimus. Have I left at Miletum sick? I left Trophimus at Miletus sick. I sick. left him there sick. So that lets you know not even the apostles everywhere they went. Everybody got healed. The apostle Paul went to the location. He left one of the brothers sick. sick. That lets you know that no man is a healer. That's right. God is a healer. That's right. Amen. I remember when the apostles went somewhere and uh, they prayed for a gentleman, I believe, who was lame from birth mm -hmm. and the man was healed and the people want to offer sacrifices to the apostles mm -hmm. as if they'd done this. And the apostles told them, no, 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 we didn't do this. Yes. It wasn't like by our power. No, no. Uh -uh, this is done by the power of God. This great message of holiness is not about Pastor Jennings. Amen. Right. It's not about Pastor Jennings at all. I'm just a servant, That's a student, a puppet. Amen. I'm nothing but a puppet. There's, there's nothing so special about me at all. I'm just a puppet used by a great master. Oh, yeah. When he pulled the strings of my mouth and that mouth come open. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take <laughs> God. Go ahead. I got the buck out God word. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So you know, there is no puppet that do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Huh? The puppet do what the master say you do. That master pull the string, the puppet raises his hand and hits you. Yeah. Pull the string again, 
hit you again. That's right. So the God of heaven done pulled the string of the gospel and got me hitting every religion under the sun that's not holy. Amen. And I wanted to say to everyone that's here this afternoon, on this Sunday afternoon here in Houston, Texas, that have not obeyed the word of God, whatever church you come from, whatever church you're a member of, I don't care about your position. If you're the pastor, assistant pastor, junior deacon, there's no junior deacons in the Bible. Uh, if you're a junior elder, there's no junior elders in the Bible. No. If you're a junior pastor, there's no junior pastors in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you're a missionary woman, there's no woman in the history of the Bible that's called a missionary. That's right. So I want to get you off your mission and bring you right here to God's everlasting word. Amen. And I, you know the Bible straighten out everything, everything. don't it? Everything, oh yes. Pastor Jenner, you mean missionary not in the Bible? No. No. You've been conned. You've been bamboozled. That's you've right. been led astray. Mm -hmm. Many of this stuff that have been taught is the tradition of men. That's right. The mothers, the older women in the church, and the young women in the church, the Bible plainly tell us what to call them. First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me, Houston. This is a wake-up call. Alarm! Amen. Alarm! Alarm! That's right. Lord, thank God, I want to stir you up until when the benediction is given, you can hear this voice all down in your gut <laughs> telling you what the word of God said. Amen. Follow me. I want, I want this to be good in case I got any missionaries here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you Houston missionaries. First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. Rebuke not an elder. Rebuke not an elder. But entreat him as a father. Entreat him as a father. And the younger men as brethren. What should we call the younger men? The younger men as brethren. As brothers. The elder women. What shall we call the elder women? As mothers. All right. Where do you get a missionary from? Amen. And what shall we call the young women? The younger as sisters with all purity. So the older women are called mothers. Mothers. And the young are called sisters. Sisters. You don't have nowhere in the Bible where our women were called missionaries. And next thing you know, women are getting up, supposed to be preaching on Women's Day and a Women's Day service and a Women's Day sermon. And you got all these women up preaching. Mm -hmm. And when the folks came here to preach against this, they say, that man, he must really hate women. I don't hate women. We have thousands of women following us. I don't hate women That's i'm right. married to a woman That's i right. sure ain't married to no man <laughs> amen <laughs> ain't nothing made on me for a man buddy no no glory to god to the highest <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right <laughs> i just want to put everything in order no and order. show you how the tradition of men mm -hmm. i, I want to work on this on in the book of i want to work on the tradition of men men and I want to compare, Houston, I want you to hear, I want to compare what church tradition have today with the Bible. Is that all right? Amen. That'll give you a better insight and a better understanding of what is Bible and what is not Bible. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go to church and read and sing and crying my fake eyelashes get loose and my mascara run down my cheeks and get in the corner of my mouth i don't want that no glory to god i want to know what i'm doing that's right i don't want to wish up god in ignorance if i'm going to go to church and work in church i at least should know what i'm doing that's right and when i die i want to die or be dying with confidence that all my teaching that i receive will Get me into the kingdom of God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Think of it. Teaching will do two things. Teaching will either save you or damn you. That's why I'm hard on preachers laying in the Bible. Amen. We don't believe in philosophy and seminary school and all of that rubbish that come out of hell and crept in church. That's right. All right, son, let's go to work. In Everybody the, follow me now. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 7, we'll start at verse 1. Yes. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, uh -huh. which came from Jerusalem. Yes. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say with unwashed hands, uh -huh. they found fault. Give chapter and verse again. St. Mark, chapter 7, now we're at verse 2. Uh -huh. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. All right. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, mm -hmm. holding the tradition of the elders. Yes. And when they were come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots. Bible and says, and of thus 
Then the Pharisees. I want you to listen at this real good. Now in Mark chapter 7, we're at verse 5. Then the Pharisees. And the scribes ask, ask Jesus. Why were not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? That's, it, it, people ask me the same thing. Hmm. Pastor Jenny, why you don't do certain things in your church that other churches do? Hmm. You know, why you don't sell ticket, tickets and ticket. why you don't have performers coming in the church and you can raise money you know you you want to build all these churches well you know you can get you know some entertainers come in and yeah. you can have maybe a christian comedian come <laughs> in and sell tickets at the door pathogenic and yeah. you know all them church buses you got why don't you rent them out to people so they can go to las vegas and yeah. and to the casinos and new jersey and all Pastor Jennings, you can make millions. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then after I do it, I end up going to hell over a dollar. That's right. Glory to God, I cannot sin to get one dime. That's right. He that gather riches and not by right, the word say you are dire fool. Amen. Even when I make money, I can't make it violating the word of God. That's right. Because then my money will be a witness against me. You will find that in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. The apostles went on down to Samaria after Philip the evangelist went down there and preached the word of God and people got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then the apostles came in town and laid hands on the people and they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. But there was one wicked fellow named Simon the sorcerer. And when Simon saw. Listen at this. In the book of Acts chapter 8 and at verse 18. When Simon saw that, that through the laying on, the of, the laying apostles on hands, hands of the apostles. The Holy Ghost was given. That the people received the Holy Ghost. He offered them money. He offered them money. Saying give me also this power. That it, Oh, wicked Simon and Saucer offered the apostles money, money, money because he wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. That on whomsoever I lay hands, he may that receive the Holy Ghost. he lay hands on, he did receive the Holy Ghost. But look how the apostles laid Simon out. But Peter said unto him, huh? thy money perish with thee. That's what I'm telling folk. Amen. I don't care how rich you are. Your mm -hmm. money won't save you. Thy money perish with thee. Your money will perish with you because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. God's word is not for sale. That's right. The truth of the gospel is not for sale. Mm -hmm. If you want to buy it, the greatest thing you can give is your life. That's it. Think of it. God wants your life. Mm -hmm. He wants your life. Those eyes that you have, that you used to go to strip clubs mm -hmm. and look at some foolish woman come down a pole and walk on her hands and knees and then come down off the stage and give you a lap dance and then you throw your money in the air and make it rain and you so foolish now you ain't got enough money to buy milk for your child pamper for your babies yeah. food to put in your house you're broke you're so broke you can't even catch a cab that's right you know you's a fool and a good fool. Thy money perish with thee. And here you got some women now doing the same thing because you got club for women. Oh, yeah. Here's an ignorant, hell-bound, body-building fool. <laughs> Get up on a stage with gold shorts, yeah. shaking his anatomy in a bunch of loose women faces. Mm. And, man, and they're sitting right there laughing and giggling. giggling. That's why the Bible says silly women, silly women, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He has sit out there and put his hands on his head and shake his private silly. parts and you get joy, sick and money down in the strap of his thong of For a head. pervert. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. The Holy Ghost says. Thy money perish with thee. See, the preachers won't preach this because they go to clubs themselves. Amen. Ah! Amen. You're a fine, you're a fine bishop. You'll find the elder and the pastor sitting back in a black suit with his <laughs> collar on backward, sitting back looking around. That's right. See, do anybody recognize him? Head tucked down in the chair. That's right. That's the devil out of hell. Amen. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Thy money perish with thee. I don't care how much money you have. You didn't, when you were born, you didn't have it. No. Amen. Your money going to perish with thee, with you, because thou hast thought that the, gift, thought of the God gift of God may be purchased with may money. Be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. You hear? Look out, Peter. Peter laying this Simon the sorcerer out. Mm -hmm. He said that you have no part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in Wait the sight. Wait a minute. Thy heart, your heart is not right in the sight of God. That's what I'm telling the world. Heart is not right. Houston, Houston, Texas, yeah. the whole state. Glory mm. to God, heart is wrong. Heart is not right. Amen. Your heart is not right and God is giving you an opportunity 
to get your heart right. Repent. You have come out of your. Look, look at it. Look at what he told Simon. Repent. Repent. Do what? Repent. That's what I'm telling you. Oh, repent. Thank God you got to repent now. Get out your club. That's woman, it. woman, have some self love and self respect. That's right. God didn't make your body to be advertised. That's right. God didn't make you to advertise your breasts, your womb, your backside, your thighs. Yeah. God didn't make you to advertise your back. Put right. some clothes on you. Amen. Amen. You get these deep cut necks and get a tattoo right on your breasts. Breast <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Amen. And then when a man looking down at your clothes, you pretend like you want to cover it up. <laughs> That's right. Yet you get a tattoo right on your breast and you know if you move a certain way, you make your tattoo move. That's right. Eh? Amen. Tattoo just saying, here am I. <laughs> here am I. That's and right. then a moment he's a peeping Tom, you like... You, you old pervert. Well, wait a minute. Wait a Why minute. you got a tattoo and then got your blouse dropped deep as my jacket? That's what right. do you think he going to do? Look up. Amen. You don't want him. Hey, hey, listen. Listen. If you don't let Thanksgiving is coming. So if you don't want him to look at your turkey, dress it. That's right. Eh? Go ahead. Dress it up, I said. Go ahead. Am I right, man? Go ahead. Say God. Go ahead. Say God. God. Repent. Repent. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. Say, God, repent of your wickedness. And pray God. Pray God. If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. You hear this? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wicked thoughts, thoughts. in our heart. That's, right. That's why we in these clubs so long. And wives got to argue with their husband. The moment he get a check, he ride by his house. Yeah. Drink it all up. Smoke it all up. <clears throat> Sit in the club with their friends. <clears throat> Children can't eat. Wife can't eat. Amen. He's out there partying. You know God is so merciful. Oh yeah. They see so many men out here living like animals, abusing women. Amen. Abusing somebody's daughter. Amen. Some of these young girls now is being pimped out by men. That's right. Some of these young girls are being pimped out by their own father. That's right. Being pimped out by your own uncle. That's right. Amen. Being pimped out by their own Pastor. That's right. Eh? That's right. Being pimped out by the church deacon. Amen. Glory to God. You see, holiness touch everything. That's right. Why? Why do we touch everything? Because the world is headed for hell. You wouldn't think Jesus ever walked the earth. No. The way that people are acting like, and these are church people. Oh, yeah. Church people now, amen. They don't want to follow the word of God. They use the Bible as a uh, just masquerade. That's it. The, the hide behind. That's right. And then so they can say they're Christian. You can look at practically every gay parade yeah. anywhere in America or out. Practically 85 or 90% in that parade going to say they're Christians. That's right. Amen. Almost 85 or 90% of the parade say they're Christians. Uh, rainbow flags now. Mm. All on churches. All on homes. Mm. <clears throat> when I went to the hotel, got back to my hotel last night, <clears throat> and the brothers, we got on the, uh, was waiting for the elevator to come down, and there were three fellas, and they all had on navy blue suits, you know, and and uh, they had on, two of them had on men's shoes. Mm. One had on a two-piece navy blue suit and woman heel shoes, sparkly shoes. Shoes look like real, like glitter. My Lord. And he walked around and standing there waiting on the elevator with his pumps, <laughs> moving his feet around. My Lord, my Lord. I looked at the pumps, looked at him, looked at the pumps, looked at him. He just standing there talking. <laughs> This is how society, society is so messed up now. They look at that. You know what they said? Well, Pastor Jenner, what's wrong with that? Right. To each his own. That's and these right. are men talking like this. That's right. That's right. Our big feet wasn't designed for women's shoes. No. Are you listening? Amen. Our big feet were not designed for women's shoes. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? I'm that, I'm that dog next door. That's right. Barking this. That's right. Do you hear this? Deuteronomy chapter 22 and at verse 5. What is it? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Wait a minute. Why in the world our women want to look like men? What is it? What is it? What is it? When you see a woman walking up the street, you should know it is a woman. You shouldn't think it's a man. No. So we take God, our women today walking up the street. <laughs> I 
our men walking up the street. That's right. That's right. Our women standing on the corner waiting for a bus. Our men on the corner waiting for a bus. Am I right, sir? Amen. Lord, help the people. Right away. Glory to God, when you tell people what's right, they look at you and get upset and tip out and walk out because they got uh, homosexuals in their family. That don't change the Bible. No. It's still wrong. That's right. I got homosexual relatives in my family. They ain't going to change the Bible. Right. It was here before they were born. Amen. Amen. Lord, that God, I'm going to stand on it or, else, or die trying. That's right. Imagine Pastor Jennings coming here, a man with ballerina pump looking shoes and <laughs> a pink suit, mm. tiptoeing in the pulpit. <laughs> Brothers introducing me, we bring before you our brother and our leader and our teacher and our guide, <laughs> our apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. And I come in the pulpit, hey, <laughs> hey, anybody want to get baptized? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's, the, that's the time you need to step to Pastor Jennings. Oh, yeah. Glory to God, I have to wake you up. I have to wake creation up. Amen. Thanks be unto God, I have to do it because this spirit of homosexuality is in elementary school, middle school, high school, the college universities, yeah. and they are destroying our young people. That's right. Turning our boys into girls and our girls into boys. Amen. And you know who's promoting it? Just as much as the center, churches. That's right. Churches. That's right. Glory to God. That's why in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. In other words, you got so-called houses of God. They don't really represent God. They have a satanic agenda. Oh, yeah. They just talk about God as a front. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they have a satanic agenda. Yeah. Amen. Let's go back to the book of Mark quickly now. I want to work on tradition of men. All right. Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 5. Follow me. Why walk not thy disciples according to the, according according to to the, the tradition, tradition of the elders? Of the elders. They bread with unwashing hands. Yeah. He answered and said unto them, Well hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. Look at Jesus. And they get on me for calling names. Yeah. What did Jesus say? Hippo well hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. No, Jesus called them Christians. Hypocrites. I have to call you what you are. Hypocrites. A hypocrite is a faker. That's right. Uh -huh. As it is written. As it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips. This is the problem, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. The people honor God with their lips. All around the world, you hear people talk about, I love Jesus. Jesus this. Jesus that. Jesus the other. But when you look at what they believe mm -hmm. and compare it with what Jesus said, mm -hmm. man, if Jesus will walk the streets of America, he'll close these churches down. They profess that they know God. Do you hear this? In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and that, uh, rather This is the book of Titus. Rather than Titus chapter 1 and Titus verse 16. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess that they know God. They claim <clears throat> that they know God. But in works, in works, they deny him. Don't they? Amen. So going to church is not enough. I, some folks say, I go to church, I'm a good Christian. It doesn't matter because you go to church. Roaches go to church. Yeah. That's why it's hard to get rid of them. Yeah. Go to church and spend a night and make more. Mm -hmm. So because you go into church, being a Christian is bigger than going to some church. That's Anybody right. can go to church. That's right. The Bible said they profess that they know God, but in works, in works, they deny him. All right. Now, are you denying God mm. in your lifestyle? Yeah. We claim that we know God. Amen. But when it come to works, they deny him. You got a Bible under your arm, but when it come to works, they deny him. You say you love Jesus, but when it come to works, they deny him. Sometimes what make us deny him is because we are loyal to bad teaching. That's right. Bad teaching have got in our blood. Thank God and messed up our spiritual DNA. That's right. And now we become misrepresentatives 
of God everlasting word. And we get it all wrong. A lot of us are sincere, mean well, but many of these preachers have pumped our brains oh, yeah. with theology, mm -hmm. philosophy, <clears throat> good sounding words, motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. They're not gospel teachers. They are nothing but motivational speakers. That's right. Anytime God sent a man, the word of God is to reach down in your soul and then give you a desire to turn from your wrong. That's right. Motivational speakers just make you feel good. <laughs> they just feel good. Bishop, feel me all over. Amen. Feel good. Yeah. Hey man, you feel happy and you clap a little bit and whatnot and smile. And, and then you and your wife, second wife, third wife, fourth wife, leave the church. You and your girlfriend go back home and commit fornication, living together, not married. You go back, get in your car, light up your pot, drive back home, smoking your weed, smiling. They said, man, he really put it down today, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eh? Amen. Why? You motivated. Yeah, you That's motivated, right. all right. Oh, yeah. But you never mo motivated to do God's will. That's right. That's the difference between an official church and a motivational speaker in the pulpit Amen. who pretends to be a preacher. Amen. A lot of folk don't know what a preacher is. Mm. A preacher is a messenger of God. He's not a messenger of a university. He's not a messenger of a college. He's not a messenger of a school. And he's not a messenger of his own opinion. That's like right. God yeah. sent, God made, God anointed, God taught, God authorized preacher is a messenger of God and nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else, I said. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. What do you say? They profess that they know God. They claim. That they know God, but in works. They deny him. Glory to God, they deny him. Being abominable. Being abominable. And disobedient. And they're hard hair. The preachers seem like they're more hard hair than the people. Yeah. You can show the preacher. Look, the Bible says this. You know what he is saying? Well, look, I have had preachers tell me, Pastor Jennings, I know what you're preaching is right, but my organization won't let me do it. Can you imagine that? Hmm. That's why we're telling people all over the world, switch loyalty. That's right. You should be more loyal to God than you are to any organization on the planet. That's right. If an organization make you wrong, I don't care if the Church of God in Christ, Church of the Living God, PAW, Pentecostal Seminary of the World, UPCI, UPCA, UPCO, UPC, whatever they call themselves. Whatever organization you in and you see that organization contradict the Bible that make you a hypocrite when you know better. But yet you do what the organization said and turn your back on God. There's no organization coming back for nobody. The Lord himself. That's right. Or oh, take God shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of an archangel. Thank God the dead in Christ shall rise. So, yes, your loyalty got to be to God mm -hmm. more than an organization. You got to be so loyal to God until if that woman preacher get up and preach. And you know, the Bible said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man, but to be in silence with all subjection. When you're loyal to the book, the moment she get up, you will get out. That's right. Your loyalty to the book. Right. Your loyalty to the book. Mm -hmm. Amen. When that preacher come and behind your back and tell your wife, why, well, Sister Cunningham, you got the calling. And he makes some fake tongue. He tell her about shop top, Peter Packer, Pick a Pepper. <laughs> Gonna tell you and your wife, <clears throat> your wife got the calling. I see it on her, you old liar. That's a lie. The only calling that she got is unto repentance. That's right. God have never called a woman to preach the gospel since God been God. Amen. The reason why these preachers use women in the pulpit, he used them to raise money. Yeah. Because even the preacher know women can raise money better than men. Mm -hmm. So he had given them all kind of titles. First lady, second lady. Amen. The, the prince, princess lady. And missionary this, the missionary the other. Call her everything. everything. Long as she bring bringing that plate of money for the false prophet. That's right. In other words, the preachers got to the point they pimped the women in the church. Yeah. They say, Pastor Jennings, he don't preach. He fuss. You call it what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm like your grandparents. You mm -hmm. know, when young parents spoil their children, let them get away with everything. And then when the children is hard head, sometimes mother and father say, all right, you keep it up. We're going to take you to grandma's house. Right then that child looked distressed. <laughs> Why? Because that child know I, there's things I can't get away with. 
at grandma and grandpa house like I can here because grandma and grandpa lay rules. That's right. You can't go in the refrigerator unless you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Get your feet off that couch. Mm -hmm. Sit down and stop acting like you ain't got good sense. Get off that phone. Stop sitting in television all day. Get a book. Read. <laughs> Amen. 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 In other words, grandparents take the child back to old school. Where in a lot of our young people, you don't want to be bothered with your children. So sometimes you sit on the phone all day talking to Cynthia, Sally, Martha, this one and the other. And the child can sit there on the phone all day. A three-year-old child reach for your cell phone and play on your phone all day. And then by the time the child gets six, he's so hypnotized by the cell phone, he's walking around. All day. That's right. Walking into cars. If you go into a supermarket or on the street, hardly nobody walk with their head up. Yeah. Everybody. About to walk into cars, trucks, walls, buildings, everything. That's right. Glory to God, I want people to come on back to what the word of God says so I can stir up your conscience. That's right. What did he say? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we don't want. We don't want to claim we know God, but when it comes time to perform, our actions are saying we are denying who we profess. That's right. Knowledge is power. This is why we take our time and labor and teach and teach and teach and teach to give you a better comprehension of the book. That's right. Go on to church. That's why you hear me say over the air, follow me in the Bible. Follow me in the Bible. Yeah. Follow me in the Bible. Because I don't want you to take things face value. We want you to see what we're telling you come right from the word of God. That's right. Uh -huh. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. All right. Being abominable. Being abominable. And disobedient. And hard head. And unto every good work. What is it? Reprobate. All right. Let's go back to the book of Mark. Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 6. Uh -huh. He answered and said unto them, well, as these eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. Of you hypocrites. As it is written. Yes. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And. Now be it in vain. It, do, oh, glory to God. Hmm. They honor God with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Have you, have you met some people they so hyped in church? You can't, they can't, you can't even have a conversation about a car engine without them saying hallelujah. <laughs> hey brother, how you doing? Hallelujah man, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord man, bro, man. hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Yeah. Hey brother, you going to school, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm going to school, hallelujah. <laughs> Overzealous. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, you learn it, when, you, we see, when you learn what God really wants out of you, <laughs> it, uh, that, that zeal will calm down. Yes, it will. Because, brother, when you come into the knowledge of what God wants, living for God is a rough, hard life. Oh, yeah. Because God asks me to surrender everything. And if I'm asked to surrender everything, then I'm asked to give up those things that I love. That's right. And you know you don't want to stop doing what, what put a smile on your face. That's right. Huh? No. Here's that man been with that girl for 10 years, fornicating every day. He can't even wait till he get off work. <laughs> Running red lights. Come, <laughs> she meet him downstairs. In the, and uh, before she even, he even get to the apartment, she meet him downstairs, <laughs> all on the steps. <clears throat> pressing up against other people's buzzer. They think someone ringing a buzzer to their apartment. That's right. Then the Lord God of heaven tell you, you are fornicator. Fornicator. He's like, what? Say what? <laughs> fornicator. That's right. Mm -hmm. This people honor me with their lips. And yet he say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. They profess that they know God. He say you're a Christian. That's right. He say he a Christian. She says she a Christian. They go, they go to some church. That's right. Drive together, live together, not married. Mm -hmm. But the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians said mm -hmm. to avoid, avoid fornication. I want everybody to follow me. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7. seven. And beginning follow at me. verse 1. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me real good. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're at verse 1. What did God say? Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. Only God can think like this because a man won't. No. Concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, uh -huh. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Ain't no man going to say that. No. Paul ain't even said that. No. Only God think like that. Amen. 
What did God say? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. And I want to say to my black brothers that are watching who think a bunch of white Europeans just got together because they was bored and wrote the Bible. Not even a European going to put that in there. No way. <laughs> no, no. Ain't no European going to put that in there. Uh-uh. What? Get chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 1. First Corinthians 7 and 1 says, It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Uh-oh. It is God good. God talking. Good. Pastor Jennings wouldn't even put that in there. No. No, I won't, I won't write that. Uh -uh. If I would have wrote that, I wouldn't have no seven kids. No. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey Amen. I ain't going to say it's good for a man not, not to, to touch a woman. Not to touch a woman. Amen. Hey uh, but the Lord says. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now tell us why God put that in there. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To do what? Avoid fornication. To do what? To avoid fornication. What type of law did God make? Let every man have his own wife. All right. If the Lord said let every man have his own wife, how is it you got rid of your wife and got somebody else's? Amen. That's not your own. Your own. Amen. That's not your own. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his I own wife. I want this wife. to be good for every young person in here and every young person that are watching that's looking at me now. I know some of you looking at me now around the world. You laying right up in bed with your girlfriend looking at Pastor Gino. Some of you write me and say, well, Pastor Gino, you tell it like it is. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh -huh. All right, sister. You may as well get out that bed, put some clothes on That's and right. go home. That's right. 